All right, it's five o'clock, so I guess we'll get started. Okay. All right. So, hello, everyone. I'm Sarah D'Amico. I'm Mary Evers. We're both therapists at DBT of South Jersey. And today we are so excited to be talking to you about alternate rebellion. <laughs> All right. So, just a couple of housekeeping items. If you have any questions, please feel free to let us know in the chat. And we're happy to answer those at any time. Otherwise, um, the, the recording of this session will be available probably around Sunday. Okay, so a couple of announcements. We have our next DBT skill session with Ashley and Kaylin. That will be on October 13th from 5 to 6 p.m. We don't know the theme on that yet, so stay tuned and you can look on our website under the dbtofsouthjersey.com slash events page. Mindful Yoga with Alex is going to be in person and virtual on September 12th. That will be at 6 p.m. If you are interested in going in person, that's at the Voorhees office in our yoga studio there, and you can email Alex and her emails alexandra at dbtfsouthjersey.com. Otherwise, you can join on Zoom and sign up under the events page. And then the next family support group is going to be an interpersonal effectiveness overview. That will be the 26th of this month at 7.15. So you can sign up for that under the events page as well. I'll answer for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so today we're going to talk about alternate rebellion, which is a distress tolerance skill. So here we have our goals for distress tolerance. These are um, what we're going to get out of practicing distress tolerance. And the first one is to survive crisis situations without making them worse. And when we talk about rebellion, there are lots of ways that rebellion can make things worse, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. Distress tolerance also helps us accept reality. And I think um, practicing this skill might it could be a, an effective way to accept the reality of the fact that if we do act out in ways that hurt ourselves, for others, it can really cause a lot of problems. And so if we still want to be able to have that sense of acting out or like kind of going against the grain, then I think that this can be a really great skill for that. And then the last, the last um, goal is that it will help us become free of having to satisfy the demands of our own desires, urges, and intense emotions. So if we feel like every time we have the urge to do something or say something or speak out and act in ways that might get us in trouble or cause problems for us, then this can be really helpful with that as well. All right. So what is alternate rebellion? So alternate rebellion is a way to express myself and get a release of an emotion that I'm holding on to that's painful, hard, without hurting myself or others. Yeah, and, and alternate rebellion is an interesting skill because it actually is under the category of distress tolerance for substance abuse. And when the crisis is addiction, these are this is a specific set of skills or part of a specific set of skills that are going to help us with that. And it can be really helpful um, if the, the reason that you're engaging in the addictive behavior or another behavior is to be able to rebel, to get a sense of like, yes, like I'm, I'm doing whatever I'm doing, what I want, F you, I'm going to do whatever I want kind of thing. And although this is specifically a, um, an addiction, Skill. I think it can be helpful for so many behaviors where we're doing the behavior to rebel and to kind of like give a big F you to the world. Yeah, and I think too, like sometimes we're so mad, we're so angry and it's too difficult to break rules. You know, I mean, not, not that it's too difficult, but we recognize that there's just a lot of challenges if I begin breaking the rules but we have so much emotion around it. So I think this skill is super helpful 
in that way and helping me to be expressive in a way that helps me really put out what I'm feeling. And again, bringing you back to, I'm not hurting myself or anyone. And I'm giving myself the right, the freedom to be expressive. Because you can think about addictions are often a way that we use the addiction because on some level it gives us a satisfaction and it gives us a way to escape. It gives us a way to feel better. And we struggle with the negative consequences. And finally, the negative consequences seem most of the time to begin outweighing the pros. So if we're someone who struggled with addiction or someone who's had addictive behaviors, you know, it could be anything that causes us that to feel like life is unmanageable and yet we continue to engage in it. You know, if we step back and think of, okay, well, how are there, how can I still express myself if I'm still really angry? I'm still really hurting and I, I feel that need. So this is a skill that we can, I don't think it's something that you would readily go to, but it's something that as we talk about it more, it makes a lot of sense and it, it is really helpful. So I guess as we go through this and we talk about it, um, you know, it may feel, you know, Sarah and I were sharing, it's a little bit, I'm somebody who probably will follow the rules for the most part. So to be rebellious wouldn't be, it wouldn't be something that would come right to me you know, but internally, a lot of times we're very rebellious. So I think it's, it's helpful, you know, like sometimes internally we are so not on board with anything that's going on and we don't say anything and, you know, to express that feels really good. So that's what we're kind of going to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think there are different reasons that we might have a desire to rebel. Like I know for myself, I love to break rules. And I think that comes from growing up in a home where my parents were both really strict. And so that there, I, there's just like that ongoing desire to like do something that I'm not supposed to. Um, I think that other reasons we might rebel are to feel a sense of connection and community and connect with like a certain group of people. What are some other reasons you think we might rebel? I think sometimes we get tired of conforming to the group, to the norms, you know, um, sometimes it feels like a rut. It feels like so repetitive doing, doing the same thing, following the same, the same rule, the same guideline. It sometimes actually just feels good to step out of the mm -hmm. guidelines, to step out of that box a little bit and, you know, change it. Yeah. It can feel satisfying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, or to be different or to like establish this sense of identity or to express yourself. So I think this is a really fun skill and it's not a skill that we get to talk about a lot in DBT because it's not a, a skill we generally teach in skills group. And it can be such a fun skill. And I think there are a lot of ways you can really make it creative and make it your own and um, find a lot of benefit from it. Okay. So this is a little visual on alternate rebellion. And on the one end of the spectrum, we have behavior that's expected of you. So like what, what someone expects of you, how they expect you to respond or behave, either based on like social rules or social settings or based on just who they know you to be. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have behavior that harms or causes negative consequences mm -hmm. for you or someone else. And in the middle is our alternate rebellion of wiggle room. So this is where we can get creative and think of different ways of like, how can I do what's unexpected or what people wouldn't think I would normally do based on like this wiggle room that I have. So Mary, what do you think if if I am in a meeting with with my boss? Like, what do you think is the expected behavior for me? Pay attention, be courteous, don't ask too many questions, say yes, not in agreement. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm in a meeting with my boss and they're giving me feedback that is making me angry or that I don't agree with, what would be behavior that that could be harmful for me or that could cause consequences for either me or my boss? Maybe an eye roll, maybe a deep sigh of, 
something like that, or maybe not making eye contact, refusing to look at them. Um, Looking at my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Walking out of the room. Yeah. Disrespect. Okay. So what, what are some things that I could do that would fit in this little alternate rebellion wiggle room? I, I think sometimes I think of some really funny things, like picture them naked, picture them, um, you know, being startled out of their sleep and not knowing it was you at the door just you know things that would be surprising catching them off guard you know it would be it's sometimes humorous to picture somebody you know if it's a boss who's particularly well-dressed or refined picturing them just getting out of the shower or no makeup on or you know just just picturing them like that you know trying to bring their them down to a humanity level that you can make fun of or kind of laugh at you know, I think that's why we probably like comedians so much because they just say all the things that, you know, we may think of and they say it out loud. So, yeah. You could like rehearse a, a comedy skit in your mind while you're sitting there with your boss um, or maybe make like a funny face at them or like just like bring up a completely random topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about how rebellious behaviors can be destructive. So how can substance use be destructive, especially if we're using it as a form of rebellion to kind of like get back at people or society or just to be different? Yeah, I mean, I think substance use can be legalized in many ways and justified in the, as many ways and made to seem like it's perfectly fine. But I think it's that thing that we have to think about. It's the relationship I have with this substance. So if I'm using it because I'm angry, um, you know, feeling really hurt and want to lash out and using this as a way to escape that feeling as a way to numb, I think that, you know, eventually that's going to hurt me and cause so many negative consequences for me you know, in the long run, I think anybody who's, you know, worked with any, any addiction can see, just see the negative consequences it, it has just, you know, because of what it's doing internally to us. So I think, you know, just remembering that when we're going to something that feels good in that moment, in that instant, and the side effect of it is it's going to make my life unmanageable. And not to mention the cost, you know, the cost of the buying it, purchasing it, obtaining it, and keeping up with it, and what I have to do to get it. So it's all the behaviors that go around it, you know, that are very destructive. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I'm doing this to get back at society or to be different or because it feels good or as a way to like express myself. And yet it's hurting me. It, it there are consequences for me and it doesn't necessarily hurt people who have hurt me in the past maybe it does hurt my family members or people around me um but it's really not an effective way to express that sense of rebellion what about something like stealing or shoplifting yeah I think when I think about that you know if we're stealing because we're just angry things have been taken from me or you know, maybe I buy something and it's not what I thought it was and I'm just angry about it. Or maybe there's something, a store, I feel like they cheated me. So reasons, you know, I think that we can justify almost anything. And, you know, we know that stealing, it, it, has, it has multiple, multiple consequences. So when we think about taking something that, you know, isn't, doesn't belong to me and I'm going to get in trouble some, at some point, you know, maybe doing things that wouldn't have such a negative consequence, like moving a for sale sign or, you know, moving a chain that's guarding a piece of ground, something that gives me a moment of satisfaction, but it's not really hurting anybody. You know, if I pick up a for sale sign and move it or turn it around, it's not hurting anybody. Um, so I think it's just that sometimes we just need to do an action. And we were talking about that, that often it's the rebellion, it's the behavior too, you know, the actual thought of doing something and getting away with it, you know, that need to be rebellious. And for some of us, it might come easy. And for others, it might be really hard. 
to pick up a for sale sign. So maybe I, that's something I could never do. So maybe I could just write a really nasty letter and just put it in my trash. Not ever mail that letter, but write it and express it, how I feel about it. I mean, there's things that we can do. I think it's a matter of taking those moments to kind of pause and know that I want to do something and let me have, let me find something that's not going to hurt me or somebody else. We're not going to have a series of negative consequences. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you think about the negative consequences, I mean, you might get away with something mm -hmm. like that a lot often. And yet what happens when you don't, what happens when you get caught, there can be some serious legal repercussions for stealing, um, and it can cause other people in your life not to trust you. So there are just so many ways that it can be harmful to you and you're taking something that doesn't belong to you. What about self-harm as, as an act of rebellion? Yeah, I think when we think about self-harming, you know, many people find uh, intense relief in that. So when thinking about that, I always want to think of, you know, doing the opposite, which may or may not be rebellious, but in self-harming, I think of just trying to do something that would soothe me rather than harm me. Um, you know, if, if my action urges to cut or to burn or do something that, that is pretty destructive, um, you know, maybe getting a really soft blanket and grabbing that blanket and letting myself feel that blanket or crinkle it up. Um, they have so many things out now that are just things that you can squeeze and hold and sort of wrinkle in your hands to get um, a sensation of texture and feeling and it's not hurting me. You know, when I'm thinking about self-harming, we think about you know, eventually we have to start hiding the scars or we're not comfortable showing those scars or we don't want to be asked questions about what happened. So thinking about, you know, taking that moment to think about the long term and the relief and curiosity, could I get relief from something not so harmful? Could I get relief from just feeling something soft or feeling something that I can squeeze really tightly? So I think it's, giving people room, like that wiggle room, I want to feel something, I want to, I want to rip something, you know, some of those things, we can stretch them, and you can twist them, and you can feel it without harming. Yeah, yeah, and then I'm thinking about some of these other behaviors, like risky behaviors, reckless driving, risky sexual behaviors, I think, um, some of these behaviors can feel really good in the moment or can feel like a sense of like, oh, I got you. Or like, again, like an F you to society. And yet at the same time, we're opening ourselves up for more harm and maybe potentially further trauma. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think, again, it's that, you know, when we're talking about alternate rebellion, we're, we actually are talking about an alternative. So we want, you know, we, we may want to engage in really reckless driving. And Sarah and I were talking about that as we were preparing for this and thinking, you know, I, I love to drive fast and I know it's, it's, you know, it's not totally okay. But when I can go places like an amusement park where you can drive those bumper cars and you can kind of crash into the walls and do things like that, or sometimes there's ability to go to those places where you can rent, um, have time with a car and you can drive it around a raceway. So there's things you can do that help you express that. Or sometimes you can find a highway with no traffic and you know, you can do 70, 80 and it's okay. You know, you can, you can let yourself feel that drive and it's not reckless. You know, you are you're not in traffic, you're not somewhere where there's pedestrians. So it's kind of like knowing that I need an alternative because often things like risky driving, risky sex, I'm in control of that. I'm the one calling the shots there. So it's, you know, understanding that sometimes it's a need to control because I feel so controlled or I feel so out of control internally. So helping me to understand ways to be expressive and at the same time, not hurting myself. 
because many of these behaviors end up, you know, not only with a negative consequence, but we also feel bad about ourselves. We feel shame and guilt about ourselves. So that's, you know, that's not a place where we want to end up. We want to end up feeling better about myself when I, when I'm going out, I want to feel good about myself. I want to feel a regard for myself, you know, and if I know that I'm somebody who's going to be impulsive and I might act out in ways that I'm going to regret. So I need to think about that. Okay. What are ways I can act out that aren't going to harm me or make me feel bad about myself? So it's kind of given us freedom to choose with understanding that I can make choices that aren't going to hurt me and actually feel pretty good. It feels good to go drive those bumper cars. It feels pretty cool to crash into something. I'm not hurting anybody. That feels good. Or, you know, just those places where you can, you know, hit the, you know, take the hammer and hit the thing and have it go up as high as you can get it. And it has all those sayings on it, you know, just doing things that you can be expressive that, you know, nobody cares. All right, so let's take a look at some ideas for practicing alternate rebellion. So we have a lot of ideas here. What are some that stand out to you, Mary? Um, I would say sleep all day on a day you don't have to do anything. Um, leaving things out of place, uh, going to a rage room, be awesome. That would be fun. I would never shave my head. <laughs> um, what do you ever chop your hair? I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel like my hair is, you know, I don't all don't love it, but I also feel like it's part of me. So I don't know if I could really chop it off. Like some people can. What do you dye it? Different color? No. Would you? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not against it. I'm open to it. Um, what are some others that? stand out to you I like the hitting the punching bag um with boxing gloves just being able to punch kind of randomly um I like wearing clothes that someone wouldn't expect you to wear you know like coming in pajamas or doing something really that you would not be expected to do yeah, yeah. like like wearing jeans like ripped jeans to like a place where you're supposed to be dressed well up dressed, yes or like the opposite you could dress up when you're supposed to be like or like when people might expect you to be, be wearing normal clothes yeah yeah and we were talking about maybe when you're needing to go somewhere that you really don't want to go and maybe it's summer and you're you know needing to go to a wedding because it's expected for you to attend it or some event expected to attend and you show up in all black, you know, just doing something like that, that makes a statement that, you know, this is me, I'm, I'm making this statement, but I'm not hurting anybody. You know, I might be standing out in all the photos, but I'm not really hurting anybody. Yeah. Or like, if you're not super sensitive to temp temperature wearing like summer clothes in the winter or mm -hmm. winter clothes in the summer that might be uncomfortable <laughs> yeah uh one that I like is uh wearing socks or underwear with swear words <laughs> there are these uh, if you google them I don't know the, the store that sells them but there are these socks and they're colorful and they say the f word multiple times on one sock and then you multiple times on the other sock and I think that could be a great thing to wear if you have to go see someone who you really don't want to see or you have to go into work every day and you really hate your boss or your coworker. um kind of a way to express that without them ever knowing yeah or like getting getting picture of a person that you don't like and drawing horns on it mm -hmm. or like just drawing over it yeah like people used to do in yearbooks mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah, just funny things that you can do, you know, you can do the memes or emojis of different things that no one would ever see, but you can, you can see it, you know, you can keep it somewhere where you can look at it. Or even, you know, writing something on your shoes on the bottom of your shoe, knowing that it's there, you know, you can make a little note. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, sometimes I think it's just that action. If you're somebody who's very neat and organized to let things go for a day, you know, giving yourself some freedom to get out of that routine, or sometimes it's almost like a obsession to keep something clean or neat, stepping outside of that with a rebellion. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pick it up for a couple of days. I'm just going to leave it there, you know, doing things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I love the idea of doing something that the people in your life wouldn't expect you to do. Like if you're someone who does wear all black all the time, like wearing pink, or Mm -hmm. if you're someone who wears like neutral colors all the time, wearing all black or like putting something on, buying a piece of clothing or an accessory that's like super edgy or, or just makes you feel, feel like a badass. Yeah. Listening, listening to a song that makes you feel that way. Yeah. Telling someone no when you usually say yes. I actually think that's why Halloween is such a celebrated season Mm -hmm. because you just get to wear whatever you want to wear. You know, you can have the most outlandish party with, you know, all kinds of things that are very out of the norm, very out of the regular, what's expected of people. Yeah, it's kind of like the alternate rebellion Mm -hmm. holiday. It is. Because because you're given permission to. Yeah. And we can give ourselves permission to rebel more often. Why not? Yeah, I think like even wearing a costume when it's not (laughs) Halloween. Yeah. Wear wear a costume to Christmas if you really don't want to go. Yeah. You show up (laughs) as a Philly fanatic. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So if anyone attending wants to share some more ideas, feel free to do that. Um, But here are a list of ideas. And I would really encourage you to get creative with it. Like, think about how you would want to practice alternate rebellion and ways that would make you feel good. Um, I think like getting those markers that you can like write on yourself with, if you like to do things like that. What do you think, Mary, about getting a tattoo as a form of alternate rebellion? I know I, I've seen and I've heard other people say that that is not an effective thing to do or an effective way to express rebellion, although Marshall Linehan has it in, in the book. Mm-hmm. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes it can be really helpful for a way, like maybe something has happened that I... I never wanted to happen or it's just something that really was hard sometimes a way you know maybe you're someone who isn't real you know not demonstrative in any way but getting a tattoo that maybe would help me create a memory or have something tangible for me to look at that I got through this I went through that you know I think that way is is good Mm -hmm. I think it's it's a good way to kind of memorialize something I I want to remember it. It has, it holds a meaning, maybe a deeper meaning for me than anyone. And I think like, as you work with people, as we get to work with people, we see multiple types of tattoos with, you know, just multiple things. And when we ask people about them and they begin talking about it, they often have a very intricate story there. So, you know, in that way, I think it's, it's a way to express a feeling and hold it with me you know when I look at that that's something I remember you know or I also think the other side of it could be if you're somebody who is kind of likes that pain that feeling of pain then it could be not so helpful for me if I'm somebody who you know feels that wants to feel that pain in a way that it's hurtful but it comforts me on some level so then I would say, you know, not getting the tattoo would be the ultimate rebellion. Yeah. Or like just getting like um one of those temporary tattoos or like a henna mm-hmm. tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. I really think it depends because mm-hmm. like you said, if, if you're doing it because I want to harm myself or because I like that feeling of pain and I'm doing it more for the pain then for the tattoo, then yeah, it's probably not the most effective skill. I would say that that's a time where I might want to use other skills like tip, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you're doing it because you really love tattoos and you really want this tattoo, I think that's great. Um, 
And like, if you're someone who likes tattoos and is not going to regret them, because if you're going to get a tattoo and then feel a ton of regret, then this is probably not an effective way to express alternate rebellion. Um, but if you're not someone who's likely to regret something like that and you, you'll feel fine with it, then it's fine. Um, sometimes, yeah, I think, I think it can be a great way to express yourself if, and if you like tattoos, that's amazing. Um, and if not, then do something else. Same thing with piercings. I think if it's like something that you want, then that could be a great way to express yourself too. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think that, and there's so many, you know, ways to get piercings that are, you know, you can hide them a little bit or you don't have to show them off all the time. So I think, you know, if that's something you really want to do and it feels like a, a way to express with my rebellion, I think it's, you know, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's all about knowing yourself and what is effective for you. What's going to help you? Is this something that's going to give you that release and kind of give you that sense of like, okay, like I'm rebelling and it feels good. Or is this something that's going to make you feel uncomfortable or something that you might regret later on? If so, pick something that you're not going to feel that way about. But if you know that like, I'm fine doing this and I can shave my head and be totally cool with it and even enjoy it, then great, do it. Mm -hmm. If not, do something a little less permanent like painting your nails a different color. Yeah. All right, let's see. Other times where alternate rebellion could be useful. So like, it doesn't have to be like this, this sense of like, oh, I wanna be a rebel kind of thing. It could be like, I just wanna do this because it feels naughty or like, because I can, like, because, because I'm an adult now and I can do whatever I want. I want to do this thing. And maybe that thing is something that's not super helpful for you. Like um, if it's getting in the way of goals in terms of like feeling really good and being healthy and you're like always like sneaking pieces of cake late at night. And it's like, just because I can, I can get away with this. Then maybe pick something else you can do just because you can as a form of alternate rebellion, if that's not something you want to be doing. Yeah. If you want to work on decreasing people-pleasing behaviors, how do you think that could be helpful for people, Mary? I think that could be really helpful to just practice feeling really uncomfortable saying no. Or maybe if you're someone who frequently gets to ask to help or to lend or to give, people kind of come to you, they expect that, oh, she'll say, yeah, she'll give it to me. Take Pick one day and say, you know what? I am not going to say yes to anything today. I'm just going to say no. And even if that feels too broad and I, I get down to it and I can't do it, maybe picking one thing I'm going to say no to today, just one thing. Because many of us get really stuck in that loop of just saying yes, offering help, offering assistance, time, money, our car, our clothing. We just get into that habit and people tend to, you know, take full advantage of that and it leaves us feeling burning out you know sometimes it leaves us feeling really angry and resentful and we are the only one that can kind of take charge of that so I think if we can practice saying no even when it feels really uncomfortable it's going to help us so it is kind of a rebellion yeah so it could be a good opposite action mm -hmm. for people pleasing or like rigidly following rules based on like feeling like you have to, where it comes from this sense of anxiety, like I have to follow all the rules. I think breaking a little rule here or there that isn't going to hurt you or anybody else, or like not following a certain rule that's expected of you could be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Another time this could be helpful is when you want to talk to someone to get closure, but like talking to them is going to make it worse, mm -hmm. or maybe you can't talk to them for whatever reason. I suggested like people write a letter and say whatever they want to say and then burn it or like hang it up or put it in a book and close it or rip it up and throw it in the trash. Yeah. Or even sometimes going into those rage rooms and just being able to be expressive 
or taking a kickboxing class, you know, they don't really care why you're there. They just give you the gloves and you're good, you know, and you can let out emotion that you would probably never, you can, you know, I think it's a, it's a healthy way because you're expressing it in some way that's, you know, you're using motion, you're using your emotion, you're, you're, you're participating in it. It's healthy and I'm not hurting anyone. And when you're finished there, it feels good and you can leave it there. I think that's the, you know, when we get angry, we can sometimes carry that anger for weeks, months, years, being angry about something. So it's, you know, recognizing it's okay to be angry in a moment when something's happened and it's unhealthy for me to be angry days, months later. So I need a way to express it, to really feel it. And there's something about the motion of movement with the, you know, the force that I'm using that's going to, it just helps. It just, it just does. So I think, you know, there's, a method to that madness of, you know, kicking and boxing something that's, you know, hanging there. There's a, there's a method to that. I think that a lot of places I know in Philadelphia, there's a couple of gyms that opened that really are open for addicts in recovery where they go in and they begin working out. They take some boxing classes and they end up feeling good about themselves, building self-esteem, self-respect. So I think it's, it, it is a way to rebel. I mean, people who've been using, struggling, you know, just really struggling to, to do daily life, get into something where they're boxing, they're, you know, they're getting fit, they're using, they're using muscles, they're moving. It's just really helpful. And it is a way of rebelling against all my unhealthy, you know, I'm doing something that's, I'm not hurting anybody. It's, it's a sport. It's, it's really healthy. So it's helping us come outside of what we would normally do if we're someone who isn't normally going to be so expressive. You know, if you're someone who wouldn't ever go to a, a random gym and take a boxing class, maybe just thinking about, let me just try this. I have a lot of anger I've been holding on to, right? I have a lot of resentment. Sometimes I just want to punch somebody or kick something. So, you know, and I probably don't, but I want to. So going and taking a class like that could really unleash and, you know, anyway, maybe be good at it. Yeah. Or even, even expressing that sense of rebellion through like dancing or like going to concerts or art, I think can be an amazing way mm -hmm. to express rebellion and kind of like go against the grid. And, um, I think for you too, for people who oftentimes they were told by other people that they mm -hmm. couldn't do something or, yeah. or they aren't able to do something that doing the thing, getting the degree, getting the job, being able to achieve this thing could be an act of rebellion in and of itself. You see that we have a question. So let me stop sharing for a second. And the question is, but what if the closure is to end the hurt? What do you think about that, Mary? If the closure is to end the hurt, I mean, I think that could be healthy. If I'm hurting about something and I feel like I really need closure, it, it could be a way to heal. Mm -hmm. So if it was maybe writing a letter that I, I won't send or couldn't possibly send, um, but I'm able to express what I need to express and sometimes reading it with somebody else or even reading it out loud um, and tearing it up or burning it, putting it, putting it away. It's, it's no longer there. It helps me to feel better. It helps me to release. And I think that's what this is about. Rebellion is often a way that does bring a closure, you know, on some level it does. So we're, you know, we're thinking about if I'm wanting something to end, you know, maybe I've been in a relationship that's really destructive and I need to end it. Or maybe there's something in my life that I've never been able to let go of. And I know I need to. So, you know, the rebellion for me might be rebelling against wanting to hold on to it and knowing I need to release it. So, you know. Yeah. And I think, um, 
I totally get the the need for closure. Mm -hmm. I think that is perfectly normal. I'm like, of course, we all want that. There are things that I definitely want closure on that I haven't been able to get closure on. And I think, I think at using this skill, I think there are other ways that you could give yourself a sense of closure to like, even um, like if it's someone who has hurt you, maybe like writing a thank you letter to them for like the things that they taught you, like that Ariana Grande song. I think that could be an act of rebellion and, and not, not necessarily sending it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but maybe then like burning it or ripping it or putting it away somewhere. But it's kind of like, like, forget you. I like, look at what I did anyway, even though you've hurt me. Um, I think even like doing well after, after you've been hurt or something bad has happened could be an act of rebellion, even of itself, taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there are a lot of things Mm -hmm. that you could do me too to give yourself that sense of closure, even if you can't necessarily get it from that, the other people or the other person. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really good that building on that when someone has said, you're never going to make it, you know, you don't, you don't have the intelligence or someone has really put us down in a way of, you know, that's, you know, going to be able to do that. And we do do it, or we do accomplish something that maybe even we ourselves thought I'd never be able to get through this and we get through it. Just like Sarah sharing that, that in itself is, is something that shows me it almost the rebellion of, yeah, you didn't think I would do this. And here I am, I've done it, you know, and being able to memorialize that in some way, you know, having a picture or having some really good, clear memory of that somewhere where I see it and I recognize it. Yeah, I got this. I did this. I made this, you know, I think it's really helpful for us to know that we have done this. We've gotten through this. We've achieved you know, many people struggle with addiction or people are struggling because they've been really hurt. They've been really wounded. So the act of recovery itself is often huge for them. You know, they attend, you know, sometimes attending the, the groups, the AA or NA groups, things like that are very celebrated. Your 30 days are celebrated. You get a, you get a key, you get things that help you memorialize what you've overcome. So that in itself is really a rebellion against everything unhealthy, everything that attempted to pull me down and keep me down. I've now been able to rise up. Yeah. And I'm even having the thought that recovery or, or healing could be an act of rebellion against people who told you that you're never going to get sober or you're never going to get better. You're never going to be able to do X, Y, or Z. Um, I think that in and of itself could be mm-hmm. rebellion as, as well. I totally agree with that. And sometimes I think because I've done this work for a while, a uh, pretty long while, and I have a, a folder that I save of letters that people have written me that have been helped and, you know, receive recovery and are doing really well in their life. And they'll send me a letter. Hey, thank you for being with me through dark times. And when I'm reading them, I often think of the people who told me, you're wasting your time with her. Like, Mm -hmm. why are you doing that? It's a waste of your time. Don't you know that? People would say things to me like that. And I think, wow, look at this. This is proof that, you know, your life was not a waste of time. You Mm -hmm. are now thriving. You're doing so well. So that is, that is an act of rebellion, you know, being able to go through those letters and look at them and see these are people's lives who made it. They got through unbelievably hard times and they made it and they're thriving and they're doing well. So that is, that is rebellion, honestly, against everybody who said, no way. So I feel that makes me feel good. It makes me feel proud. Yeah, definitely. So inspiring. All right, let's go back to our slideshow here. Okay, so we're going to watch a clip of Alternate Rebellion, and this is a scene from G.I. Jane. And in this, um, Demi Moore's character has been recruited into like a special ops kind of 
uh, opportunity and they never thought she would make it and then they're really mistreating her and so we're going to watch how she practices alternate rebellion PGYN, I have to keep on staff just so someone can keep track of your personal pep smears. But most of all, what I resent is your perfume, however subtle it may be, competing with the aroma of my fine $3.59 cigar, which I will put out this instant. If the phallic nature of it happens to offend your goddamn fragile sensibilities, does it? No, sir. No, sir. What? The shape doesn't bother me, sir. Just the goddamn sweet stench. <laughs> One standard. Just treat me the same, no better, no worse. You're gonna get everything you want, O'Neill. Let's just see if you want what you're going to get. Who ya, yeah, sir? Okay. So what did you think of that scene? I think it's incredibly empowering just to be able to do that and look at herself and feel, you could just feel her F you and that's why yeah. she's doing that. You know, it's just, it's very empowering to watch her. Um, I, I don't know that I could ever do that, but I could really like feel that power in it and I think that the behavior is what's so captivating you know she's doing it she's not hurting anyone you know her hair will grow back and in that moment she just feels that empowerment of I'm doing this is a way to say F you to all you guys yeah so that just, that just feels very good to me yeah yeah what are some ways that she could have expressed rebellion that could have potentially been harmful to herself or gotten in the way of her goals or like have pursuing her dreams. Yeah. I mean, I think personally from what, you know, I have watched the movie in, in its entirety, but thinking that in that moment she had, a, she could have walked out. She could have fought with him. She could have spit in his face. She could have punched him. Yeah. She could have done many, many things in that moment. And she completely sucked it up, you know? Yeah, you could see inside that she was probably thinking, but she she held it together, and I think that in itself was also very empowering. That that need to want to say one million things, she didn't. You know, she said what was expected of her, and 
she didn't cave. She looked him in the eye. She didn't divert the eye contact. So I think all of that was rebellion. Yeah, exactly. Because it seemed like he was trying to break her down. Mm -hmm. Everyone just wanted her to quit and walk away. And, and if she had done that, or if she had punched him, which would have been so valid, (laughs) um, then, then she would have been doing what everyone expected and wanted her to do but she didn't and then she walked away and shaved her head mm-hmm. as an act of rebellion and she kept going yeah. she sure did so yeah so those are you know kind of maybe more extreme example but in the moment you know that was you could say that was what she needed to do she needed to be able to express herself in a way that was rebelling um, and it wasn't hurting anyone but her empowerment was heightened, strengthened in that. Yeah, and it gave, that it's almost like the act gave her the ability to keep going. Keep going. Yeah. 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 All right. So A-G-Y-N, well, not keep friends it again. Um, any questions for us? I'm gonna stop sharing. Does anybody have any questions? thoughts all right do you have any any final thoughts Mary I mean I hope this was helpful you know as we talked about it I think we talked about many you know varieties of ways to be rebellious and you know just asking you to think about the consequences or how you'll feel about yourself before you engage in your rebellion. No. As long as I'm not hurting myself, I'm not harming others, go for it. Yeah. I hope that this gave you some ideas for how to express that that need to rebel or express yourself or kind of just say F you to the world or maybe someone in particular in, in a way that is not destructive and that is not going to stop you from achieving and pursuing your goals. Mm -hmm. So thank you everyone for taking the time to watch and hopefully we'll see you later in some form. Thanks. Bye. Bye.